What's going on guys and welcome back to another Satisfactory video. Where last time we finally constructed this building right here. For the sole purpose to produce all of our iron needs. From plates, rods, reinforced plates, rotors and yes, frames. So you must be wondering what we're doing on today's episode. And that is to create an extension on this side of the building to make steel. But also remember to like, subscribe and also leave a comment even if it's just an emoji. So the first thing I quickly want to go over today is this coal plant right here, which is located in the Crater Lakes. And this can be found right here on the map because it's got three pure juicy coal nodes and quite a bit of water for your water extraction needs. Oh, and some floaty beans, apparently. <laughs> so now you can see we're making 2,925 megawatts. Wait, that doesn't seem right. 24 plus 16 is 40 times that by 75 is 3000 so we are missing one bloody generator which means we have a cable missing somewhere and the desert one is clear so it must be in this one in the crater lake somewhere it is bits you bloody spoon connect this back up and now we're sitting on 3000 megawatts perfect so it's time to get back to today's main objective. So as you can see, I've laid down the foundation with a seven meter underflooring and decided to create a little bit of an entrance to link both sides, which we just kind of just removed a window and added a door. And ever since about learning these doors, I do them all the time because they're just super cool. It just adds so much more and makes it very much more spacey. <laughs> So if we take a look at our steel ingot recipe, it requires 45 ore and 45 coal to make 45 steel. But I want to go one better and use an alternate recipe, which we're going to actually use the alternate solid steel ingot, which requires 40 iron ingots and 40 coal to actually produce 60 steel ingots, which is going to be a better output for our resources. So that means in our setup, we actually need to put a smelter before the foundry. And as we know, the iron ingot recipe only produces 30 iron ingots per minute. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to overclock this, put a power shard in there, change that to 40. So that's now 40 iron ore needed and 40 iron ingots on the output. And that 40 iron ingots will then go into the foundry because that is what's required there. And as we know, a conveyor mark 2 transports 120 items per minute. And if you do the simple maths, 120 divided by 40 is 3. Which means we need 3 foundries and 3 smelters, where the 3 smelters will be overclocked to 40 per minute. And then it's just a matter of bringing the iron nodes in, which you can see we've got 3 120 lines right here. And that is utilizing this pure iron node, these two normal nodes, which are being merged together to make the 120. And then the third node is just another pure node. And then just like before, I'm kind of putting them on these kind of like pillars, kind of stilts right now. It's a little bit different than pulling it on normal foundations. And later on in the episode, when we start unlocking more stuff with beams and steel, I want to spice them up with some cool industrial kind of feel to them. So what we need to do next is just bring in the coal lines. And that's where these four nodes will come in. We have these two right here, which are two normal nodes. And then over here, next to the quartz, we have two pure ones. Then after hooking all them up, bring them alongside the other iron so they're all organized. And then come back onto the main floor and then start working out where we want to start putting our um, machines. So if this is going to be our walkway here, and this is going to be for a, a thing for like personal use for me to get around, it makes sense that this block right here is where we're going to start putting down our machines. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to put down a smelter like right here say and then we're going to put down our foundry literally on the input right about there i think that is a good enough distance i think yeah it should be and then we're going to put down another two foundries which i want to put these kind of like a half block in and you'll see in a minute why and then we just want to get three more smelters line these up like this connect them up with mark one belts all the way along put a floor hole at the input of the smelters and then at the input of the foundries and then we're going to get um some foundations up here and i want to kind of go um vertical two three 
about there. Grab myself a one meter foundation. And then we're just going to zoop this across here because we're going to put the constructors that's going to make the steel beams above. So then if we bring this along like three more times, maybe three, I don't know. Yeah, I might trim it down to two. I don't know. Grab ourselves some Mark 1 uh, lifts to put on the on the lifts, on the lifts, on the holes <laughs> to actually go inside the machines. And then on the output of the foundries, I'm actually just going to stand here. I'm going to grab myself a conveyor hole, look directly up and place. That will allow me to grab a Mark 1 lift and bring that straight down and put that into there. Because as we know, Mark 1 it holds 60. Foundry with the solid steel ingot recipe is going to be sending 60 ingots. And then we just place the rest of the lifts down, climb our way to the top layer. And then we can kind of see where our constructors are going to need to go. So we grab ourselves a constructor. And then we can just place that down in front of the lift holes like this. And then when it comes to the third one, we're having a little bit of a problem. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab the half meter, one meter foundation, place that there, and that should allow me to do it because it, it's just that the floor was too steep. So if we just line that up and then we just need to grab ourselves a uh, lift and we're just going to put these in here like this. And then we can see the constructors are being directly fed from underneath, keeping it nice and clean. And then on this side right here, we just need to put our mergers down, mark one belts on the outputs. And then because this is making 15 steel beams per minute, the merge line only needs to be a Mark 1 as well because we're only making 45 steel beams. And then we're going to put a conveyor hole around here and then grab ourselves a lift again and then put that there. And then what I want to do now is just kind of assess where this is going to go into. So it's going to go like there into the floor. So if I just lift that up by one, then I can kind of visually see where it's going to be placed. So... Wait, one more back. God damn it. There we go. Nope. Still getting it wrong. <laughs> it needs to go there. There we go. Okay. So then I can put the lift down into that. And then, as we normally do, uh, because what we've been doing recently is doing like a lot of the decoration with the, the barriers. So I'll bring this to the end. And then I'm going to put that by there. Grab myself a small metal pillar. And then just bring that across like this. And it kind of sections off the area for what we want to do. And just kind of breaks it up from the floor and where we're going to be walking and stuff. And we can just add some lights and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of want to keep that theme throughout. But then what I'm thinking about here is because this is going to be our walkway, we're going to see this. And you know, we don't want to trap a finger in the lift and we want to make sure it's safe. So we're going to put down a barrier. I'm going to place one right there. We're going to place another one right there. Uh, no, another one right there, sorry. And then remove this one and then put this here. Then we're going to grab ourselves a modern railing, hold control and replace the barriers with um, pillar. Like What are they called? God damn it. What are they called again? The, 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 the railings. <laughs> Bloody hell. And then as we always do, we're going to grab ourselves some railings along here and then just bring this across like this and just follow this all the way around. And uh, I think it's going to look pretty cool and we should be good with that. Then obviously we just need to power everything up and then work out the underfloor and logistics. So as we know, this one is going to be our output. So this is where our steel beams are going to come from. This is our coal and these are our iron. So just like I always do, I always place this one down first, then grab ourselves a splitter and then we're just going to place that one like there and then i'm just going to remove that one because it's kind of like a um a guiding kind of one and we're just going to line that up and then just wait for it to snap just like that and then connect up these with mark two because we're bringing in 120 coal 40 is being sent up into each one so it's gonna get a mark one lift and then bring that down and connect it to the splitters and then bada bing bada boom connect up the power cables as i always do through the flooring set up the coal line here bring in the iron line right here Add a bit more designing work, added a trim to the top shelf, and then created some diagonal pillars coming down here. If you don't know how to do these, I highly recommend you check out this tips and tricks video right here. If you don't know how to do these, or if you don't know how to do mass dismantle, uh, selective dismantle by doing that kind of stuff on only selecting smelters, highly recommend going to check out that video. Link is in the description. Okay, so as you can tell, I've been a little busy. And yes, I've added the pipes in there, but also you've probably noticed we've added another steel in there. 
But also, I've duplicated the whole production. That's because I've unlocked Advanced Steel Production, and I've also unlocked Logistics Mark III, which is now going to give us Mark III belts, but also industrial storage, power storage, lifts, and stackable pipelines. And in the Advanced Steel Production, we can now get minor Mark IIs, in case industrial beams, stators, motors, automated wiring, and yes, heavy modular frames. And Mark III belts actually transport 270 resources per minute. And as we know, we had three smelters, which was uh, requiring 40 iron ore per minute to output 40 ingots. So if you double that, that would be six smelters with six foundries, and that will make 240. But then to make the additional 30, we have to leave this smelter right here to its standard um, production rate. So it's not being overclocked. But what we've done on this foundry instead is we've actually reduced this to 75% clock speed because that takes the iron ingots to 30, the coal to 30, because as we know, 30 coal is going into, uh, sorry, 40 coal is going into that one, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 240, and the additional 30 going into that one is 270, as well as all the iron is being consumed as well. Oh, that was a bit of a mouthful, I'm not going to lie. But we've also set up the pipes as well in a very similar fashion. And that is, we've just not overclocked any of the smelters and foundries. So if we look into a smelter now, this smelter is taking in 30 ore and outputting 30 iron ingots. But then the foundry is using the solid steel ingot as well, which is taking 30 coal, 30 iron ingots, and outputting 45 steel ingots. But if we head upstairs and take a look at the constructor, each constructor actually requires 45 steel ingots for the standard steel pipe recipe, outputting 30 steel pipes per minute. Which means if we do 270, which is a Mark III belt, divided by 30 for the output of the pipes, equals nine constructors. And right here, we have nine. So all the way along there is nine constructors, outputting at 30 per minute, which makes us 270 pipes per minute. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to look at encased industrial beams, and that can be made in the assembler. And as you can see, we have two recipes, because this one is from a hard drive. So if we look at the first one, this one requires 24 steel beams and 30 concrete, which is going to output six industrial beams per minute. But if we look at the alternate recipe, that's going to require steel pipes at 28 per minute, and also 20 concrete per minute which is only going to output four encased industrial beams. But this one is better overall. And the reasoning behind that is because you make more steel beams than you do steel pipes initially. But also, we're going to be using a lot of Mark III belts, and that is made from steel beams. So we want to make sure we've got quite a bit of supplies. So what we want to do now then is we want to bring in the limestone. But yes, have you guessed it? I've already done it. I've brought in the limestone from multiple locations. They're only bringing in 120 right now, but we're going to make sure we upgrade them to a Mark III and set up for a Mark III design. So what I'm thinking, if this is going to be our pathway here, I'm going to put down a um, road barrier just there. And then we're going to divide that off. So I've got a man, my next segment here. Um, so I can bring this down like this. And then I know I can work anything past this beam right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center right there. And then I'm going to put down three holes. One, two, and three. This is going to bring up 270 limestone, 270 limestone, and yes, 270 limestone. And as we know, in a constructor, if you want to make concrete, it requires 45 limestone per minute. And then if you do a Mark III belt at 270 divided by 45, that's going to be six machines, which means that all of these conveyors that are going to be coming out of these lifts are going to be going into six constructors. And as we know, they output at 15 per minute. So in total, we're going to be putting 18 constructors down we're going to times that by 15, which should equal 270. So all of the 18 constructors that these three lines are feeding into are going into one Mark III line, which makes things super bloody simple. So how we're going to set this up is what we're going to do is we're going to get a constructor and we're going to place this down like right here. And then we're going to put that down six times. Two, three, four, five. Ow. Did not mean that to happen. And I didn't realize how short that <laughs> that thing was going to be. So let me just expand that and then add down the sixth one. So there we go. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to do it on the same side. Well, the, the opposite side, not the same side. And we're going to put that like right there. And then we're just going to do the same again. Make sure I don't fall off this time. Two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to put down the mergers. Uh, sorry, mergers. No, the splitters. I'm going to put this down like this on every entrance of the constructors. And then add your belts. Obviously, mark threes because that's what's going to be coming up the lift. On both sides, add the three lifts. Connect them up like that and then get this one bring it down raise it and then place it and then bring this bell over the top just like this and then take it down to the end place that just like that and then what we're going to do is we're just going to put three more constructors on the end here so one two and three and one here one two and three then we're going to get a splitter and then this time it's going to go directly in the middle make sure it lines up to both inputs of the constructors just like this and then again mark three belts going down the spine and then bring that down into the splitter then obviously you mark one belt going on the inputs then that means 270 is going down into this line and going into these first six these six is being fed by this line down here and then these three well these three on this side and then these three on this side are being fed by this belt which is carrying 270 as well and then, yep, you've guessed it, merge the outputs all onto one line. Do the same for the opposite side. And then on both ends, I put it down onto a lift and then goes underground, merges together to make a 270 concrete per minute line. And also, yes, I've done the encased industrial pipes as well. Just like I said, five assemblers being fed by the steel pipes and the concrete, which is coming from the underflooring, of course. And then the outputs being sent back under to the underfloor. And then everything coming to a logistical bus underneath, which gets sent to storage, which I've actually moved from this location into this room right here, into its own designated corridor, where the pipes encase industrial beams, concrete and steel beams are as well. And we've even got room for something else. And to be honest, that should actually have a line coming out of it. So let's just put a mark one there. And as you know, I do live stream all of this. So if you ever want to see it, ask any questions, ask the community questions, you can come and say hello. But also for those that can't join the live streams, make sure you check out my second YouTube channel. When this video airs, all the other behind the scene videos go up. So all my VODs, which could be like three to four hours long, and you can just scrub along the timeline to find out more of how I did this or anything else in these videos at a slower pace at your level so you can learn a little quicker and get influenced into your builds. But overall, we've got quite a bit of stuff done and we've got a lot more work to do in this area because I want to bring in statters, mortars and start working on the assembly parts. Oh, but also wanted to put this into a structure itself. But I don't want to do that because we've got a lot more items to bring in. Otherwise, I'm going to be fighting around my designs and all that kind of stuff. But I kind of want to see where it's going to take us in this next week of live streams. So as you've guessed it, that's going to be the end of this video. So check out the rest of my content right here. And as always, keep smiling and I'll see you in another video.